Madame la Présidente, Madam Chair, Madame et Messieurs les Ministres, Mesdames ministers, et Messieurs les Députés, Délégués libéraux, Honorable Members, Ladies and Gentlemen, Liberal Delegates, My dear friends, it's something to be back. And to be introduced by my good friend, Lawrence. You know, when I became Prime Minister, the first cabinet meeting, Lawrence was there. After the meeting, he called Francis, his wife, and he said, darling, I will be back on the farm in four years. <laughs> because Chrétien said, I will make what has to be done with the finance of the country. And, you know, it has to be done. I might be prime minister only one term, but I will do it. So Lawrence felt he was not to be reelected. He was a bit mistaken. He was re-elected nine times after that. <laughs> but he was very useful in the cabinet. When the people will start with big theories, I would say, I'd like to know what Mr. McCauley thinks of it. And everybody will come down on the ground with two feet, right on the ground, stop dreaming. So, thank you, Lawrence, for your presentation. I understand that Hillary Clinton will come later on. <laughs> you know, for eight years, Bill was the president and I was the prime minister, and we met many, many times. She became a very good friend of Aline, and uh, one day she played a kind of a trick. It was the summit of the Americas. And Hillary had put the name of Aline as a speaker. And Aline was not aware. <laughs> so they insisted. I said, no, I'm not making speeches. The stage is for Jean, it's not for me. So they insisted, they prepared a little speech in English and in French to talk to all the delegates for the summit of the Americas and the, the spouses who were there. So Aline was not very happy, moved in her room and came down, moved to the podium and spoke to the, the delegates in Spanish only. <laughs> and nobody knew in the Kenyan delegation that she was speaking Spanish. So Hilary was a very good, they were very good friends and I had many occasion to discuss with her, but I'm very preoccupied to see her in Ottawa today. The Globe and Mail will get crazy. <laughs> she is an American, melding in Canadian politics. We need a royal commission. My friend lawyers in Ottawa like the Globe and Mail because if we have all the commissions that they want us to have, they will all become very rich. <laughs> Me too, I intervene at times in politics elsewhere. One day I was in the Philippines and I liked very much uh, Ramos and I said he should be reelected. Oh my God. But I survived. And another occasion, the ring election of 2015, I was in Washington, in Washington. And they asked me, what do you think? Madame Clinton is sick. She has to stop her campaign. She had some pneumonia. Oh, I said, don't worry, you know, they have medication for pneumonia, but they don't have medication for stupidity. <laughs> no, 
not. It was not meddling. I didn't name anybody. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, they say that politician, even retired politician like me, should not fill their speeches with statistics and numbers. But, but tonight, I want to talk to you about three numbers. Three, three big round numbers. 30, 60, and 90. 30. Because this year, in October, will mark 30 years since the 1993 election when the people of Canada <laughs> elected, elected the first three liberal majority governments that I had the honor to lead as prime minister. <laughs> 60, 60, because last month was the 60th anniversary of my first election to Parliament that occurred on the 8th of April, 1963. <laughs> 90. Because it is my 90th years, I will turn 90 in eight months. <laughs> and And, and I intend to celebrate all year long. <laughs> but relax. You will be able to invite me when I will be 100. <laughs> People say I, am, say I am an optimist, and I am. I think it is the secret to a long and happy life. But I have reason to be optimistic. I look at Canada. I look at how far we have traveled. Look at what we have accomplished together. That is why I am an optimist and I'm also a realist. Il y a 60 ans. Accompagné 60 years père, ago, with my father, Maurat, and with Aline, who was my Rock of Gibraltar, we walked under the Peace Tower. I had just been sworn in as a new MP. I was only 29. I was 29 years old. I was a young unilingual lawyer from rural Quebec. I had never gone any further than uh, the Ottawa River. And so it's one, one of the greatest moments of my life. And all of that was due to the citizens of Shawinigan that entrusted me with their votes for the next 40 years. They entrusted me with their support for the next 40 years. And I will never forget the incredible loyalty that they've shown. And I also want to thank the people of Beausséjour because I ended up, uh, after I resigned, I didn't have a seat. But as Acadians, they received me with open arms as uh, their MP in Beauséjour. And uh, I really had a good time in Beauséjour. The Canada in 1963 was very different than the Canada we have today. There was national uh, health care. If illness struck a family, they were at risk of losing everything, including the family home. We didn't have two official languages. We didn't have a charter of rights and freedoms. And our constitution was, in fact, a British law. We didn't even have a national flag. 
And uh, I take this opportunity to uh, salu salute uh, the new king, Charles, who was uh, crowned uh, over the weekend. I met him in 1970 when the queen and Prince Philip, and Princess Anne and himself, Prince Charles, came to celebrate the centennial of the Northwest Territories. And for four days, Aline, my daughter, France, and I hosted the royal family in the Great North. And this was the beginning of a friendship that has lasted 53 years with the royal family. And the Queen has given me the Order of Merit, and I really appreciate that honor. And I hope, I wish to the new king the best of chances and success in his undertakings. Talk about these things that happened, and they did not happen by accident. They did not fall from the sky. They happened because liberal governments made them happen. I know because I was there. I'm extremely proud to have served under two of the greatest prime ministers in Canadian history, Mike Pearson and Pierre Elliott Trudeau. <laughs> Canada was never perfect. No country ever was. But we did not look back. We look ahead and move Canada forward. We made it more just. We made it more prosperous, more caring, more tolerant, and more diverse. That is what liberals do best. They see the future, and they rally Canadians together to build that future. I was there for the Medicare, for the FI, for the Canadian Pension Plan, for the two official languages, for the patriation of the Constitution, for the Charter of Rights. <laughs> for the abolition of capital punishment, for, for the permission of divorce in Canada. <laughs> you know, I was there because, you know, it was Canada at its best that I lived during all these years. So, I mixed up on my page here, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I get off of that damn text once in a while and, <laughs> So, you know, we did all that. It was a kind of future that was built under Mike Pearson and Pierre Trudeau. And then 30 years ago, the people of Canada turned to us again. Many of you in this room were not even born, but ask your parents. Ask anyone who was there, the Canada of 1993, was in desperate and desperate shape. We were in the worst economic crisis in half a century. We were broke. 35 cents of every tax dollar went to pay the interest on the debt, not the capital, the interest of the debt. It was robbing us of the future, your future. The International Monetary Fund was knocking at the door. The Wall Street Journal was saying we were a candidate to become a third world nation. And even worse, we were going through the worst national unity crisis in our history. The support for separatism in Quebec was at all time high. 
and people across the country had given up hope. As hard it is to believe in 2023, 30 years ago, millions of Canadians were giving up on Canada. In this hour of crisis, the Canadian people turn again to the Liberal Party and to me as leader to rebuild their hope and their trust. And that is what we did. We turned the economy around. We restored the confidence of the Canadian people. And I did not do it alone. I had a great caucus. I had fantastic minister and it was a super team working together. But we did it the Canadian way. We did it the Canadian way, in a liberal way, with a big heart. After we had cleaned up the big economic mess, we invested in people. We increased, for example, the EI parental leave to one year. We, we created the national child benefit. We made the biggest investment in post-secondary education in Canadian history. With the Millennium Scholarships, the Research Chair, and the Canadian Graduate Scholarship and others, we made Canada, we made Canada the place to be for the best and the brightest. We reverse the brain drain and turn it into a brain game. Yes, we had a big heart, but we could also be tough. Because to govern effectively and fairly, you have sometimes to be tough. And you know, I don't mind being tough when I had to be. You remember the Shawinian and Sheikh? <laughs> when I was the president of Treasury Board, I was called Dr. No. So when big banks and their friends and lobbyists came to us and they said to us that we had, they had to merge, like in the US, we got tough. We said, no, that is not good for Canada. We said, that is not good for Canadians. And we said no to the bank mergers. And in 1998, 1999, and 2000, there was absolutely no problems with the financial institution in Canada compared to the problem in the South. <laughs> and when, the separatists will not stop trying to destroy Canada with trick questions and sneaky referendum. We got tough. We said no, no more. And we brought in the Clarity Act. When George W. Bush, and in fact, almost the entire business establishment in Canada said, you have to join the invasion in Iraq. We said, we are not the 51st state. We are, not, we are an independent country. We are an independent country. We take an act for ourselves, and we said no. It was tough, but it was the right thing to do because it was true to our values as Canadians and as liberals. When you stick to your values, you cannot go wrong. That has been my experience all my life and all my political career. It was true when I had the honor of being prime minister, not just in the decisions i already mentioned, but in those we don't think of so often 
or we take for granted. Like leading the way on the global treaty to ban land mines, or creating the International Court of Criminal Justice, or bringing very tough gun control laws, or to be the second country in the world to permit same-sex marriage, Or, or, or eliminating, eliminate, eliminating corporate funding of political parties and so much more. And we did these things because of our values. And it's thanks to these values that we decided to bring order to our public finances. The debts that we inherited were detrimental to the future of our children. children. So after 1995, after 95, we had another nine. We had another budget with a surplus under the liberal regime. And for the last 60 years, there have been only 10 surpluses, budget surpluses in Canadian finances. And Mr. Polievre, it was always under liberal governments that this occurred. So, the first deficit occurred after I left, when Stephen Harbour and Polièvre came back on the stage. But I, I really shouldn't mix uh, the name of Polièvre with Stephen Harper's name, because I, I'm not comfortable doing that. Polièvre is so negative. So far right, that Harper appears reasonable. If he continues that way, <laughs> if this continues, he uh, could become very well asked to become a member of the Liberal Party. Well, anyway, we have benefited from the reforms that were brought about uh, to uh, political party financing in 95. And this is why the present government was able to invest in programs for children in uh, uh, and dental health, the dental health of children. And despite the pandemic, where the government had to spend, and as every other government in the world had to, the present government nevertheless was able to keep Canada as the country that has the lowest debt per capita of any of the G7 countries. And who would have believed every, before we were always confronted with, uh, with unemployment? But today, our main problem is a worker shortage. I never would have believed, uh, I, you know, to be in rural Quebec and in the Maritime, seeing everywhere we're hiring. I never thought I would see that in Canada. So that's why I believe that Canadians will once again want to put their trust in the Liberals at the next federal election. In 2003, I spoke to the Liberal Convention and I said that Liberals must never, ever lose their social conscience. 
It is more important today than ever. I am proud that today Canada has an activist, optimistic, socially progressive, progressive liberal government. And, and it's because it's the Liberal Party that is there, because we are part of a strong, vibrant political tradition as old as Canada itself. It was has made us, it's what made us the most successful political party, not just in our country, but in a democratic world. <laughs> our party never had to change its name since 1867. That, you know, line from Laurier through King and Saint Laurent, through Pearson and Pierre Elliott Trudeau, myself and Justin Trudeau. And that, my friends, is my message to you. That is why I'm proud to celebrate my election as an MP 60 years ago my election as Prime Minister 30 years ago, and, and my proud long life membership in the Liberal Party in my 90th year. And, In conclusion, for finir. In conclusion. So, to close, I would like to, I would say, like to say to you, dear friends, dear friends and for those of you who are listening, listening to us, when I was prime minister, when I was prime minister, and I would attend to international when I meetings, and meeting to uh, international heads of states, meetings to meet with other leaders. When I would come back to when Canada, I came back to Canada, and set foot on the Canadian I soil, would I would tell myself just how, lucky how lucky I, I was. Am. Just how lucky and I would tell I am other people as well Canadian. that out of all the world's even if it was very difficult, to be, difficult to be prime minister, I thought that I had I the, the easiest the task of all task. the other heads of state, and I, could understand and I understood why millions, why millions and millions of people, of people in the world in the want world to come want and live come in Canada. Share they in want to become Canadian, Canadian citizens. citizenship. Share in our country. So I understood all the time coming back to Canada. After meeting the other leaders in our environment. Chaque fois que je retournais au Canada après avoir rencontré des, des millions de and share our so-called miseries. You know why? Because Canada is the land of freedom. Canada is the land of opportunity. Canada is the land of generosity. Canada is the land of stability. Canada is the land of tolerance. Canada is the land of the rule of law. No. No, 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 Mr. Polyev, Canada is not broken. Yeah. Canada is the land that makes the envy of the world. Canada is still the best, and vive le Canada! Long live Canada.